Hey everybody, welcome to episode number 20 of Friday Fruit Clips. This is my weekly series where I focus in on well, three or four fruity false teachers or fruity false prophets in order to expose these wolves who are actively shipwrecking the faith of many worldwide. Now you'll note that I use humor quite a bit, and yes, you may detect some mockery in here because, well, we're talking about false prophets. These are the wolves that Jesus warned us about. So I'm going to shine a light on their corruption and pray that uh, some would see the silliness of their scams and well, come out of the folly and back into the sound doctrine and serve the Lord Jesus Christ in truth and sincerity. So we've got some fresh clips picked out for you today. So buckle up and here we go. All right, so first up, we've got Brenda Kuhneman. Brenda Kuhneman, she's going to show us how to prophesy today, or so she thinks. Now, Brenda is the wife of Hank, the casino mob boss, Kuhneman. You talking to me? Hank, of course, a confirmed false prophet who makes his living lying in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at him there. I want to make him an offer he can't refuse. <laughs> sure thing, Hank. And Brenda here thinks, well, doggone it, if my husband can do it, I can be a prophet too. So we're going to play some clips and we're going to comment as we go. Let's take a listen. Healings that are dropping in the room. Somebody who needs something with an organ and I don't know what that is. I don't know. What's on your right side? Now this is absurd, of course. Brenda wants you to think that God is speaking through her. She says that healings are dropping from the ceiling. Organs, I think. I don't know, she says. Can somebody help me out? Does that sound like prophecy? I'm not doing too good right at the beginning here, Brenda. Livers, kidney, livers over there. What's over else over there? Huh? Come on, where's my biology people? So Brenda says, where's my biology people? Not sure what that is, but... Why do you need biology people? Uh, you should be getting this directly from God, right? Well, she's not. And see, that's, that's the trick, folks. She's not getting any word from God. She's not actually prophesying. She's making this up. This is called theater. She's an actress, and she's working the room. And it's very sad because she's harming people. But let's continue. Whatever's on the right side, I feel like there's an organ. Somebody, God's fixing something. Who is that? There's somebody, there's, God's repairing some damages in the organs. Come on, Kaleva Bosa Internet as well. Come on, who is it? Who's receiving a healing in their organs? I also sense something, and, oh, and Bunyan, Bunyan healing. Is there organ or Bunyan healing? All right, so again, very concerning. What's going on here? She's asking the people. Hey, uh, is it organ or bunion healing? Hey, you over there. Note the uncertainty of this alleged prophet of God. She just doesn't know. Is she hearing from God or isn't she? But here's what's happening. What she's actually doing is she's searching the room for reactions. Reactions from the people as she just randomly throws out random sicknesses. Hey, uh, anybody bunions? Anybody got bunion problems? Anyone? Bunions? No? How about uh, liver? Anyone got a liver problem? Liver, anyone? Okay, uh, next. How about kidneys? Anyone have a sore kidney? Maybe. Oh, good, you do. Okay, yep. Yep, the Lord's talking to me about you. Come on up here. Yep. Wasn't that specific? No, it wasn't. This is fishing. This is a carnival act. And it's very heartbreaking to watch gullible people fall for this over and over and over again, century after century after century. These are just the latest carnival acts right here with the uh, Kunamans. They're just the latest. Uh, something going on. If that's you, just come to the front. Somebody, God is healing. Somebody, there's, there's issues and, and you think, man, I need to get surgery in my feet. If that's you, come to the front. Come on, shake a little bit. Everybody praying in the Holy Ghost. Somebody who needs a, a foot fix or you're thinking a surgical 
repair on the foot, bunion surgery. I see a left knee, an issue in the left knee. Who is that person? Come, wave your hand, come to the front. Internet, come on, this includes you as well. This includes you also. I, I, I also hear that there's somebody in here, somebody said something to you. It was like it was almost this week or in the past few days that was just cruel. I mean, it was just unkind. Who, if, if you'd be so bold, is there a person in here? You, somebody said something to you. Come up here. Come on. You know, Brenda, that, that might have been me. Uh, a lot of people said a lot of mean things to me this week and uh, a lot of cruel comments. Perhaps she was prophesying about me. Well, unfortunately, no, it wasn't. So what Brenda's doing here, again, is she's playing to the emotions because people are mean. Do you think there was anybody in that uh, facility that uh, someone said something mean to him? Of course there was. There always is. Do you know why? Because we live in an evil world. So another trick, and sadly, somebody fell for it. So this lady right here in the right sweater, I hear, I hear the Lord say that you've been waiting for something to just turn around. It's been a very difficult season, and you came in with your heart just broken. You feel shredded. You feel disillusioned. But God said you walked in here today so that the Spirit of God could wrap himself. Now, Brenda is really displaying her talent for deception. She's good. My goodness. She's right up there with Hank. Now, she's found a lady in the audience to which she's noticed her reactions, and she's taking advantage of that, and, well, she's displaying her talent. Giving a fake prophecy to this lady, although it's generic, it's quite convincing. Also, remember at the beginning of our segment here where Brenda, well, she just didn't know anything. You know, was it kidneys or bunions or livers? Very foggy. It was something blocking the prophecy, or so she made it seem. Well. Not now. Now, she's apparently fixed that connection because she's hearing specific things from God and it's all coming through crystal clear. Finish listening to this. Around you and the Lord says, I'm bringing you now into a new season where you'll have to trust me. But God said, if you'll trust me and you'll pursue me and you'll follow me, God said, I will shift things and I will. Watch this now what the Lord said. I will restore the years, plural. There's been a lot of years where it feels like the locust has eaten, the canker worm has come, the devourer has come in, and you feel like there is no future and no hope. And God said, not so, says the Spirit of the Lord. Watch me turn it around in a supernatural way. If you'll run hard for me, I will do it for you. I promise it, says the Spirit of grace. Come on, shake a love Who are the people that need healing? Okay, so that's Brenda Kuhneman. Um, it, it's just so sad, isn't it? Uh, pray for this woman. And pray for those who are caught up in deception, in delusion by vipers like the Kunamans. They do this for a living. And it's just pathetic. In Romans chapter 16, we know what's going on here. Look what it says in starting in verse 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and what? Avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but what? Their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. So summing it up, serve their own belly. Deceived simple. Pray for them in Jesus Christ's name. All right, next up we've got Charlie Shemp, self-appointed prophet. I told you that some of these shameless false prophets would come forth and try to take credit for prophesying the fires in Maui. But listen very careful as I play this next clip for you. Listen to what Chuck says here in his so-called Hawaii prophecy. Listen to what he says and then see if you agree with this being a prophecy about Maui burning. You ready? Spirit of the Lord showed me 
that that dragon seeks to bring the spirit of death upon this place. The spirit that lifted off of the nation through Roe versus Wade in certain sections where abortion will not be allowed any longer. He seeks to land in the place to bring bloodshed. And unless there is significant intercession that will come up from these islands, that spirit of death will come into this place. Reality sinking in after wildfires raced across Maui, the death toll rising and likely to go higher. The urgent search for the missing and the painful questions about the state's disaster warning system. Okay, what do you think? Pretty dramatic, huh? I should have you know that this video that you're looking at, he put out uh, just six days ago. And so the news uh, report that you saw at the end of that, very effective, right? It, it made it seem like his prophecy came to pass, didn't it? Bullock does this all the time. Right? But if you listen to what this clown said, it really doesn't come close to a prophecy being fulfilled. First of all, Shemp was, this was in Hawaii. He was speaking in Hawaii. So they always deal with issues wherever you're speaking. If he was in Chicago, he would have said something about Chicago. If it was New York, if it was Fort Lauderdale, you know what I mean? So this was in Hawaii. Secondly, he said the spirit of Roe versus Wade was coming to land on Hawaii and bring a bunch of evil, unless, unless there was like some serious prayer. So now try to make this make sense. Do you, do you think, first of all, that there's a spirit of Roe versus Wade? It's just so ridiculous. And, and, and it was just like ominously traveling around looking for a place to land and it Whoops, it's spotted Hawaii. It's coming, folks. I mean, it's just so ridiculous. What about the rest of Hawaii? Why did the spirit of Roe versus Wade only target Maui? And it burned Maui. It's just so utterly absurd and insulting that one can hardly bear it. The spirit of Roe versus Wade came to Maui and burnt it up, huh? Unbelievable. False prophets, false social media prophets, are seared conscience and shameless. Posting videos of obscure and vague predictions with zero specificity, only to try to gain street cred so they can pose as prophets in order to get richer. Never mind the hundreds uh, who died. Never mind those who lost their homes, their properties, their belongings, their livelihoods. There was one lady who couldn't get formula for her baby. But Charlie's got to get a video up, got to put a social media uh, video up so that uh, people can see that I'm a prophet. That's the most important thing, right, Charlie? Unbelievable. Pray for the people of Maui uh, and pray that vipers like Charlie Shemp would not be able to take advantage of them any longer. In Jesus Christ's name. All right, so next up we've got a guy. I'm going to try to pronounce his name correctly. Steve Chayocalante. I'm probably way off on that. I wanted to play this clip because you're going to get an insight to madness. And the parallels that obsessed nationalists make when comparing the likes of Donald Trump to, yes, Jesus Christ. So I'm going to play this clip. It's a little over a minute long, and then I'll be back to comment. Give it a listen. If you've read The Divine Code, you know that patterns follow certain people's lives. Like Donald Trump, for instance, was born on a blood moon and very significantly tied to the nation of Israel. Well, something else that's really significant that I think uh, you're not going to hear on the news, but it makes heaven's news, is that Trump has just been arraigned in New York City on exactly the eve of Passover. On the Hebrew calendar, that's Nisan 13. Now, you might say, well, what's the big deal about that? And again, if you haven't studied the Hebrew calendar, you might not realize that there's another calendar that's running that is not 
you know, the Western Gregorian calendar. And a lot of times significant events, prophetic events happen on that calendar. So what is the significance of Nisan 13? We have at least two meanings. Number one, the day that Trump faced his charges was the same day that Jesus Christ faced his charges. They were trumped up charges. Pardon the pun, but they were trumped up charges when Jesus stood in front of the Sanhedrin and Pilate and all of these six uh, unjust trials that he went through, starting on 13 Nisan. That's exactly the day that Trump appeared uh, in New York to face his charges. You know, when I first heard this clip, it literally made me sick to my stomach. This is just so deranged and blasphemous. This guy right here. He's actively teaching hundreds of thousands to just casually put Donald Trump at the same level as Jesus Christ. You know, and some are going to argue with me, no, no, Drew, that's not what he's doing. And I would answer back, oh, no, yes, he is doing that. I, I just look at this guy. If, if, if he were here, I would, uh, how dare you make this comparison, sir? You know, this is one of those times when one wonders how this man is just not immediately struck down instantly by God for daring to make such a diabolical comparison. It's, again, really a testimony to the mercy of God. But it, it shouldn't surprise us, should it? These are what the social media prophets, the Christian nationalists, they're all working towards this, you know, in conjunction with the, the new apostolic reformation and the new age fraud weirdos the dominionists and the seven mountain mandate agenda, all of it's unbiblical and blasphemous. And again, just to do a quick look here and just sort of wonder out loud why people follow people like Chocolante or Ch Ch Chocolante or however you say his name, almost 350,000 subs at this channel. This video, which was put out four months ago, four months ago almost 400,000 views. Think that people like to hear this kind of stuff? Of course they do. And this is why this is so troubling. This is the damage that these social media prophets, these Christian nationalists are doing while they preach this false gospel. So certainly keep this guy in prayer. Pray that this guy would shut his mouth because right now he's shipwrecking faith while he teaches this unbiblical blasphemy. Unbelievable. Let's move on. All right, so rounding up the show today is Kent Angry Man Christmas. Kent's a very angry prophet, and I'm very much glad that this guy wasn't my dad growing up. Kind of scary. But this is a video. Actually, I think this is a repost on another channel, but um, this is a video. It's been out a couple of days, and he's giving a prophecy here. And he really heads out into the stratosphere on this one as he over the top gets emotional with some pretty good acting skills. So we're going to listen to the first clip here so you can get a feel for, well, maybe an Academy Award winning performance. But uh, let's give it a listen. I have, um, I've touched something in the spirit. And I believe that God is going to release something today by the Holy Ghost into the atmosphere. And the Lord says that I am opening the heavens. Sunday. <laughs> Those of you that are listening to me right now, you just begin to release your prayer language. I'm telling you right now, Sunday. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is, God says there's a repositioning. Oh my God, I see it. The Lord is. The hand of God is reaching down wherever you are right now, whether you're in your living room, your car, I don't know, but I'm telling you by the Spirit of the Lord that God says that there is an open heaven and it's almost like there's a rapture in the spirit realm, not not and not in the natural, but there is God is is taking a hold of your spirits right now. And, and the Lord says that there has been uh Many of you have been set free from from things, harassments, de demon spirits, habits. All right, so that was a pretty good performance, right? And by golly, it's just so 
coincidental that the camera was rolling and right when the camera started rolling he looked up into the spirit and oh my god i see the spirit or whatever he said and and he was you know touched something in the spirit and, and the camera caught everything so he was able to make a video so lucky us but i'm just looking at him right now <laughs> he's got his he's got his fist clenched he wants to just reach out and crack you he wants to punch you because he's an angry man i don't think he likes humans but either way uh i noticed a pattern as i listened to the rest of it and so i kind of cut and snipped and put this pattern together i'm going to play it for you right now see if you can identify it and uh, i'll also kind of consider this a challenge because it's kind of hard to hear but also kind of funny so give it a listen Release, haya bobo sandaya, the brain, haya bobo sanda, the ya bobo bobo sanda, even as mins, yara bobo bobo sanda, hara bobo bobo kotoria sande, yaria sita la bobo bobo sanda, yaria kita la bobo bobo bosoria sanda, creation, kara bobo bobo sanda, it's Haya bobo bo sande, iaya bobo satarias haria satala bobo bo satala baba baka sande ya, iaria kita la bobo bo kotoria sande, ya bobo bo sande. So yeah, I'm not sure who Bobo is, and it sounds like he wants to see him on Sunday. I could be wrong, but he said it several times. So I'm thinking that uh, he really needs to see Bobo on Sunday. Either way, uh, maybe you disagree. Maybe maybe it's real tongues. Maybe that's a real language, right? Uh, in any case, all right, so I pounded that into the ground. Uh, Ken Christmas, ladies and gentlemen, just wanted to include that. Uh, a confirmed false prophet and a master manipulator. Stay away from him in Jesus Christ's name. All right, folks, so that's going to wrap it up for this week's episode of Friday Fruit Clips. And, you know, that last clip with uh, Ken Christmas kind of reminded me of something. So I thought we'd close out the show with that old tribute to Robert Tilton. See if you guys remember this and see if the tongues, the so-called tongues, kind of sound familiar. Here we go. Watch this. Get up right now. Yes.